Welcome to the GCN Tech Clinic. This is the show where we answer all of your tech related questions that you've been leaving down in that comment section below. We have taken a handful of your questions, all your tech related questions, and we're going to answer them right here, right now. But if we didn't answer your question this week, please leave them down in that comment section. We'll try and get them around to them next week. But first on. Fantastic. First off, let's get on to our first question from Matt. What would be the consequences of using a chain made entirely of quick links? First, wow. First of all, who has enough quick links to make a chain? Maybe this person. Go on, Matt. <laughs> Go on, Matt. Um, well, they also said, what about using zip ties? Well, I don't think you could use zip ties. That would be useless. Would that, but would that just snap instantly? I mean, the sort of power you produce, yeah. True. There's no zip ties surviving that. Um, and a, cha a chain entirely made of quick links. One, I don't think anyone really has that many quick links unless you bought them all, which then means it's going to be an incredibly expensive chain to make, and you're going to have to get all of the rollers um, from an old chain. So you're going to have to use an old chain and quick links. Anyway, it has been done. I've seen a video online. It's possible. It works. Should you do it? Probably not. But if you want to waste your time, your effort, and your money, it sounds, yeah, it sounds like a lot of time and effort to make a chain when you could just use a normal chain. I'll tell you what I would think would be really cool though, is if you could make a chain and replace the rollers with carbon fibre rollers. There's a bit of a challenge That's for you. That's got me thinking yeah. about that. Uh, Video okay. coming soon. <laughs> Next question is from Stephen Williams. They say, hi, at what speed do aero wheels become an advantage over shallow wheels? For example, 50 millimetre deep versus 25 millimetre deep. Thanks very much. Well, what do you think? Well, there's probably actual specific stats on this where, yeah. where having deeper section wheels will be faster, but yeah. I don't know. I don't know what, what the actual speed is. Um, well, I don't know that either, but if I was to, to guess and give an example that might be relevant for most people, I'm going to say around 20 kilometres an hour. Much slower than that, I don't think the aerodynamic benefit to be had is going to really come into effect. Mm. The fast, basically, the, the principle of it is the faster you go, the more advantage and the more speed gains you're going to get from using an aerodynamic product. Be that the wheels, clothing, your body position, that's when it becomes more relevant. I just like using the deep section wheels anyway because they make a nice noise. Look absolutely boss, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they do look good. Yeah. Um, I mean, that in itself is going to be worth a little bit of speed. Yeah, a bit of morale, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Next question is in from Roland. Riding in a strong crosswind the other day and wondered if a high cadence would give a gyroscope effect and reduce buffering from the wind, presumably, presumably from feet and shoes, if so. Can Ollie show us the maths, please? Um, well, no. Ollie's not here, and I most certainly can't show you the maths. I'm useless at maths. So but well. I think both of us can speak from experience, having ridden and raced a lot in crosswinds, haven't yeah. we? And I'm going to say your cadence and the gyroscope effect of your feet and your shoes is going to have no noticeable impact on the stability in a crosswind. Yeah. I think, for me, the things that are important are things like your body position on the bike, where you're riding in relation to the rider in front of you and your position on the road because if you've got a crosswind which is coming from your left to your right and you're riding right on the right hand side of the gutter well when the wind blows you're going to be off the road yeah it's not so, going to help you out yeah unfortunately i don't think no. maths is going to solve your problem and even if it if it was a thing we definitely would have heard more about yeah. it in racing and yeah we um, so. Okay, so next question in is from Boss G. They say, is it possible for a bike with a mechanical group set to be set up fully integrated, so all cables hidden? What could be the downside of doing that? And can you do that to any bike frame so long as you've got an integrated stem and handlebar? Yeah, I think that is possible for sure. There are, there's lots of bikes out there that have mechanical shifting and all of the cables are hidden away neat and tidy. The only downside I think from having mechanical cables routed internally is that the way they go through the frame, it's like a bit of a snake flowing through mm. around those bends and corners, which adds a little bit of drag into the system. Therefore, your gears aren't going to stay as precise and crisp for quite as long as they would have otherwise. That's yeah. true. Okay, cool. Next question is in from Alvaro. Hi, guys. Have uh, road tyres got expiry dates on them? Hmm. I don't know. I don't think they have. So I don't think I've ever... They haven't got a little barcode that say best before on them. No, that's a good point. So this person is saying that they've bought some tyres eight months ago and they're concerned that by storing them and not using them, they're going to be okay. Yeah, I think, if, especially yeah. if they've been kept in a box and haven't been touched, they're definitely going to be okay. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure I've got tyres on some of my old bikes 
that are really old. Yeah, like we're talking five, well over five years. Five plus years, definitely. Especially on like my dad's old mountain bike or something. They've yeah. probably never been changed and that still gets ridden. So, I mean, there. technically, over time, yes, the rubber is going to degrade. But They'll we're like talking, crack a little bit. We're talking a long, 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 long time. Yeah, many yeah, years. Probably yeah. outlive us. Maybe, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, okay, I'm glad we cleared that up. Next question is from Matthew Craft. They say, I'm looking at buying a new bike, but I still want to be able to compete on some PR Strava segments. Would a gravel bike with good road bike tyres and wheels be much slower than a mid-level carbon endurance bike? Manon, what do you think? Take it away. It's not going to be slower. And um, good choice to get in a gravel bike. Gravel is the future. Um, <laughs> but I think the things that matter are the wheels, your position on the bike, being yeah. aero, the frame. Gearing. Yeah, that's yeah, probably gearing as well. Yeah, um, but no, I think getting a gravel bike. I definitely choose a gravel bike, and then having the options of putting slick tires on there. So it basically is a road bike. So yeah, it's that's a, a really option. good point, actually. Yeah, is with the correct wheel and tire and gearing choice, you've effectively pretty much got, pretty a, road much got a road yeah. bike. There's not much difference, is there? No, the, the difference is minimal. So yeah, it's not going to be any slower. Um, match up your body position, I think, is the most important one from me. Which might be a little bit tricky because the geometry tends to be a little tiny bit different on a gravel bike. Yeah, I think. So. Fair to say. Um, last question. Go on, take it away. <sighs> last question is in from Stefan. Got I've got fifty millimeter rims. What tubeless valve length do I need? Oh, I love not, a good tubeless question. Not forty millimeters. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's going to be too small. <laughs> um, so if you the rims of your wheels are fifty millimeters deep, you're going to need a valve that's a little bit longer. Lots of valves come in a sixty millimeter option, which means there might only just about be enough poking out of the rim for you to get your pump onto, which might be fine they for some pumps. You might snap it off and it might, yeah. You yeah, don't it's not, it, it might work, but play it safe, go for some 80 mil length valves. There's gonna be plenty of it poking out. Get your pump on, no stress. Is that what you do, 80? <clears throat> yeah, that's probably what I do. What I do want to point out is if you're buying a bike new, quite often in the box, you've got tubeless valves tucked away somewhere in there, mm. so don't buy any straight away. If you're buying new wheels, quite often they'll come with tubeless valves as well. And if you haven't got them, if you are buying new tubeless valves, please buy some cool coloured anodised ones. Oh, like the muck-off ones. Yeah, I love I those. I love those. Just add a little bit of to the yeah. bike. Very Can't lovely. beat some coloured anodised tubeless valves. No. Pimp, pimp your bike out. Yeah. Treat yourself. Um, well, as I said, that was the last question for this week. Sorry if we haven't answered your question. Don't hold it against us. Keep we'll commenting in the comments section down below. Well, see you next week, shall we? Yeah, right. see you next week. Bye.